Hey there, it's Anonymous Tea, where we spill the tea anonymously. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. Hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Sending good vibes and positivity, good energy, and blessings to each and every single one of you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So we have to talk about the beehive, you guys. We have to talk about the beehive because you guys are not having a good two weeks, you guys. You guys are not having a good couple of weeks. You are really showing why there are so many people who are afraid to say anything about Beyonce that is not worshiping the ground that she walks on, that is not treating her like she is a god. This is the reason why people do not see anything. But then when she doesn't win album of the year, there's this, oh my gosh, there's this outcry Beyonce didn't win. Even though the dream exposed that it is Beyonce's music peers that vote on these awards. So basically, they don't like her. Right? So what has happened, right? And the slander really has started since Rihanna's Super Bowl performance. Like, let's keep it a buck, right? Uh, so what ended up happening was Beyonce's former creative director, Beyonce's former choreographer, who has done several um, big-time, big heart marquee events, has worked with all of your A-list artists, you guys. He sent a very nice birthday message for Rihanna, um, whose birthday was earlier this week, you guys. And, you know, basically said, hey, you know, this is one of the best Super Bowls I've ever seen. Really broke down everything that Rihanna did that has never been done before in a Super Bowl. And people, well, the beehive, lost it. Lost it, said that he was mad that he was no longer working for Beyonce, and he was trying to convey that, you know, relationships, there, there's not this imaginary world where even when he was working with Beyonce, that they always agreed on everything. He said what they did agree on was making sure the product was on point, right? But sometimes you have different ideas or whatever. But he was articulating why he liked the Super Bowl performance. And I didn't know that you can get critiqued and dragged like this for having an opinion, you guys. And now Stephanie Mills is getting dragged too, right? A.K.A. Michael Jackson's girl. <laughs> A.K.A. Um, one heck of a singer, you guys. One heck of a singer. And I'm going to have to ask how old some of you are if you do not know who Stephanie Mills is. We're going to need to check your driver's license, you guys. I'm going to need to phone your parents. I'm going to need to know what happened in your upbringing that you have never been exposed to any Stephanie Mills song, you guys. Or her history with Michael Jackson, you guys. Why nobody does any research and just attacks anybody that comes for Beyonce is beyond me, right? And, and in this instance, she wasn't even insulting. And before I go into this, I want to say this, and I've said this a million times, you guys. I was a Beyonce fan, like diehard, right? I wasn't Beehive. That's a whole nother level of unhinged territory that I'm never going to bark into, right? I preferred, and I've said this a thousand times, preferred her music with Destiny's Child and I preferred her first album, her first solo album. I feel that's still her best work. I like some of the songs off of B-Day, although the best song off of there is irreplaceable to me, right? And I liked a couple of songs off of the album four. And everything else, I really can't listen to, right? There might be one or two decent songs from Beyonce, but she doesn't have the discography. I'm sorry, Beehive. Sorry she's not, right? She does not have a discography where... I can listen to every single album of hers, no skip. I can do that with Michael Jackson. I can do that with Janet Jackson. I can do that with Prince. I can do that with several other artists, but I cannot do that with Beyonce. Sorry about that, right? But I've been to all of Beyonce's tours, you guys. I've been to all but two. I refused to go to the Mrs. Carter World Tour because I had an issue with that tour because there was supposed to be an album that was supposed to come out that was supposed to correspond to that tour. And she ended up dropping the album after the fact and going on tour after the fact, which I went to the tour after the fact for what the album was for, you guys. But I was not playing that game where you're going to have me play twice to see you for no, 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 no. No, 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 no. So I went to every single tour, except for the Mrs. Carter World Tour, and except for the On the Run 2 tour, because I did not like the album with a bleep on it with JC. Didn't care for it, and apparently you guys didn't either. Right? But basically, Stephanie Mills says, on a Vlad interview, that, you know, Diana Ross, she's class, 
she is elegant, all of these things, and said Beyonce's R&B. Now, she wasn't shading her, but you guys took it as shade, right? But she's not wrong, right? With the exception of this last dance album, Renaissance, Beyonce has been heavy into this trap R&B style type of music she's been putting out. She's completely abandoned her R&B and pop roots, you guys. She's been doing all this hip hop stuff, you know, doing songs that, you know, Sway Lee and Future and everybody wrote and produced for her and everything else, you guys. When is the last time you had an album like for or like Beyonce's debut solo album? I'll wait. Ever since she has been following trend after trend in the hip hop genre, you guys. And that's fine. That's fine if she wants to do that, right? But don't get upset when people don't stream it. Do not get upset when people do not stream it and people go back to your first solo album and stream Crazy in Love instead. Right? Or go back and stream Single Ladies, even though that's not one of my favorites. But people will still go back and stream Single Ladies or whatever, right? Because that was a song that went number one also, right? Or they go back and stream Baby Boy. Because they don't want to hear the recent music that Beyonce is doing. That's why it has like an initial splash and then it fades. And so you guys are dragging these people, these black legends in the industry, you guys, who have way more connections than you guys will ever know about, who know the A-listers, who know these A-listers' families, you guys, and are allowed to, I don't know, have their own opinion. This whole thing, where you get dragged, where you get death threats, where you get your life completely picked apart, if you are not worshipping the ground that Beyonce works on, has to stop. I have never seen anything like this for an artist. Even Michael Jackson and Prince and Whitney Houston didn't get this kind of treatment, you guys. And I would argue they're better songwriters, they're better, better or vocalists, much better performancers than anything Beyonce's ever put out. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. I'm going to kick you with a buck. We, we've done too much coddling in this day and age where some of you refuse to be honest with yourselves and have this notion that nobody is ever allowed to criticize Beyonce. And I don't subscribe to that narrative, you guys. I've been telling you guys from the start that Beyonce is not who she used to be, you guys. And that her star power is not what it once was. And that there is a reason behind why former bodyguards, why all these people are being more vocal and outspoken about how they really feel about Beyonce, you guys. And you guys need to be careful because you're ruining it for actual Beyonce fans. And you're ruining this experience and you've resorted Beyonce down to just people only supporting her when she goes on tour. But you support nothing else that Beyonce has out. You don't support her music. You don't support anything new she comes out with. There's initial buzz. There's initial smoke and mirrors. And then it disappears. And you go back to streaming her old stuff, right? Then with Ivy Park, and like her four other failed clothing lines, there's initial buzz. You guys get caught up in the marketing campaign, but then when it's time to purchase, you are nowhere to be found. And that is why Adidas is out of $200 million <laughs> as it pertains to the Ivy Park line. But you guys spend your time on social media searching for any and anyone who has ever said anything negative about Beyonce or you insert Beyonce into conversations that do not concern her. When Frank Gatson said that that was one of the best Super Bowl halftime performances he's ever seen, he didn't say anything negative about Beyonce, but you inserted her name because you wanted to know his ranking of Super Bowls, and you wanted to know why he said what he said about Rihanna, and you wanted to make it about Beyonce. And that's what I mean, you guys. You guys are very dangerous. A very dangerous fan base, you guys. Because instead of appreciating Beyonce, instead of holding her accountable and saying, you know what? This was not a good album. This was not a good song. This was not a good performance. Instead of doing that and being real, you worship anything and everything that she does. You give her no criticisms. You say everything that she does is perfection. 
You say every single song, every single album she's ever done is completely perfection and is better than anything that Michael Jackson and Prince and Whitney Houston and Janet Jackson have ever put out in their careers. You go completely overboard. And all Stephanie Mills was trying to say is, listen, they have a similar trajectory, right? They both came from groups, but I would argue the Supremes were a much bigger group than Destiny's Child. Come on, Motown? Are you serious? Diana was already a star. She was already the it girl. Beyonce was not who she was until really she got with Jay-Z. Because even when she started doing like, you know, experimental solo stuff, she really wasn't like A-list yet, right? That was all with the help of Jay-Z, right? That was all the help of Jay-Z of really giving her that confidence that she could do this, that she could do this as an A-lister. Because if she just would have stayed in Destiny's Child, or if she would have went solo without Jay-Z, we would be having a much different conversation right now, you boys. And you guys have to think of the time frame where a lot of Motown artists basically got ripped off back then, where, you know, although there was a lot of notoriety, there was a lot of sales, there was a lot of nonsense that was taking place, right? And there was no social media back in. And there was no additional sponsorships and opportunities like there is now. So if you want to argue about money, and and I guess, I guess really that's the only argument. Money and how many total awards Beyonce has is really the argument people go for, right? is, oh, Beyonce made X amount of money or whatever, or she's worth X amount of dollars or whatever, or she has this, she has the most Grammys ever, right? So that means she's the best. And it's like, come on now. She has more Grammys than Prince, than Michael Jackson, than Mariah Carey, than, than all these people. Diana Ross still does not have a Grammy as we speak. And she's still an icon, you guys. And she is still a legend. And guess what? D Diana, Diana Ross, she acted too. And she's a better actress than Beyonce. And Diana Ross, we know her. She does interviews. She talks to people. When's the last time you heard Beyonce talk that wasn't on a record and that wasn't at a concert, you guys? She does not talk to the people. She does not relate to any of you. But you guys go hard in the paint and defend her till the end. And she is the only A-lister that does not do any speaking at all. But you guys go so hard and you drag anybody that has anything positive to say about somebody else that's black. And it has to stop. Beyonce is not the only black person to ever exist in this world, you guys. Beyonce is not the only entertainer to live in this world. Beyonce is not the only singer to ever do it and become a star and perform at an arena that sold out and win awards and perform at award shows and be a part of a singing group. Oh, and acting dream girls that is based off of the Supremes. Like, 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 at what point are you going to not realize that there's a lot more in common that Beyonce has with Diana Ross than, than there's not, right? The only difference is we have social media now where people just want to basically worship the ground Beyonce walks on. And, and that's not okay. That's not okay. That is why there have been several artists who have been able, and several celebrities overall, who have been able to reinvent themselves, who have been able to be successful in other ventures besides of what they're primarily known for, is because they're humble. And they've made themselves available to their fans, you guys. And they have really taken, you know, the respect and the integrity of what it takes to be a human being in this industry and not being malicious and not doing behind the scenes foolishness, you guys, and not paying for all of this publishing and songwriting credits and producers and writers coming out saying that they did the entire song. But they'll get blackballed if they expose it. Shout out to Neo, right? They get blackballed if they expose what's really happening behind the scenes, right? But then you have people like The Dream, who is still working with Beyonce, but basically had to sell all of his publishing. So that should tell you everything you need to know about where, what Beyonce's star power is, right? 
that he still has to sell his publishing because he can't afford to live the lifestyle that he needs to live. Because he should have been retired off of the hits that he made with Beyonce alone. But again, once she has a chunk of that songwriting and publishing, even though technically it's the dream song, guess what? The payout's not the same anymore after 20 years, right? The royalties aren't the same anymore. The streaming's not the same anymore. Because like I told you, people are not streaming Beyonce's recent stuff. Right? But again, you guys are ruining this, right? And it's going to be to the point that nobody's going to want to deal with Beyonce because they don't want to deal with the fan base. They don't want to deal with the beehive. And one of the Grammy voters had it right in the article where they said that there is this entitlement that Beyonce should be awarded for everything, no matter what. And that is a turn off to people. You can't just have this notion that Beyonce's bigger and better than any other black artist that's ever existed in the history of music. And that if anybody dares to break any records and is successful and does something innovative or does something that even before Beyonce did, that they're going to get dragged and picked apart by the beehive. And that's not okay, you guys. That is not okay, right? But you guys need to change up. Because sending people death threats and sending people hate and being negative and jealous of anybody that says anything nice about another artist, whether it's Diana Ross, whether it's Rihanna, whether it's whoever, you guys need to get it together. You guys need to get yourselves in formation and figure out how you're going to change the outlook of your Beyonce. Because she's not looking favorable right now to a lot of people. Now, some people aren't going to be as bold as me and say it out loud. That's why I'm here, to say it out loud, right? Because her peers are scared too, because they don't want to be dragged like Stephanie Mills and Frank Gatskin have been dragged this past week, right? But something has to give. And Beyonce's not giving. <laughs> She's not. She doesn't have the star power that she used to have. And you guys are not being honest with yourselves. She's a great performer, woo, woo, woo. But nothing outside of performing has worked out for her, you guys. Nothing. Everything ends up flopping. Or has initial buzz, like I said, because of the Beyonce PR machine. And then it fades. And then you hear about other celebrities and even reality stars and even socialites that are surpassing her in popularity, surpassing her in net worth, surpassing her in sales and ventures, the same ventures that Beyonce is doing. Why? Because the likability factor is gone. There used to be a time when, and this might have been back when um, Beyonce's father was managing her, where people liked Beyonce a little bit, right? People thought there was a likability factor to her. But then they started to shut her down once they started to see her talk too much and see how she really was around Destiny's Child. And then they're like, oh no, we can't have that. We can't have that out there. People are going to hate her. So now she's just completely mute. And only talks when she's accepting awards and when she performs. <laughs> like, like, that's it. We can't even get a video transcript of an interview anymore. We can only read them. We can't even get an audio of actually hearing Beyonce saying the words that she is telling these people she's interviewing. That's how bad it is, you guys. But you beehive do not care. And you guys will tear these people apart, and it's sad. And it gives a bad name to the actual genuine Beyonce fans who truly enjoy her artistry, but are not pressed by her peers, are not pressed by what anyone else is doing, and may in fact be a fan of a Diane Ross, and might also be a fan of Rihanna too. But some of you Beehive cannot help yourselves. You think that you're doing something by dragging all these people and saying all these disgusting and nasty things to all these other legends and all you're doing is making your fave look bad. Because at the end of the day, who was a reflection of who? Right? And the only time Beyonce has ever come out and condemned the Beehive was when you accused that owner's wife of having an affair with Jay-Z at the Warriors game. That is the only time that her publicist has ever come out and said something. 
Any other time you guys have gotten away with sending death threats to Rachel Roy and her kids? Because <laughs> you thought she's Becky with the good hair. Like, you guys just don't stop. And you guys need to reel it in and need to realize there is room for everybody to eat at the table, you guys. There's room for everyone to have a seat at the table. Shout out to Solange. <laughs> Shout out to Solange. But guys, there's no way that this is going to be happening um, with Solange, you guys. But this is what I mean when you guys think this notion and you've programmed yourselves to believe that there can only be one. And when you do that, you alienate so many people. And you have other people that quietly distance themselves, you guys. That quietly distance themselves. Um, so there is that. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post some content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.